Hello, this is Broyer, and welcome to another First Impressions video for Civilization VI Gathering Storm. Today we're going to be taking a look at Mali, which is going to kind of repeat uh, the pattern that they've had so far of having very unusual civilizations in the Gathering Storm expansion. So this is very, very cool, very creative, um, and it's going to have some interesting mechanics and interesting gameplay style that uh, not everybody's probably going to like, but if you do like trade and lots of gold, this may be the civilization for you. So let's get into the video. Mansa Musa leads Mali in Civilization VI Gathering Storm. He may have been the richest man who ever lived and used his wealth as a tool to enrich his empire. Mali's unique ability is Songs of the Jaili. City centers receive additional food and faith for adjacent desert and desert hills tiles. All right, so additional food and faith for adjacent desert and desert hills tiles. And I'm assuming it also counts the um, the desert floodplains here as well, because we are getting a total of six food and six faith, which there are six tiles surrounding this um, the city right now. So um, he's going to probably have a desert bias, I'm assuming, based on some of the other bonuses that he's going to get. Uh, so you're going to be putting cities either on or near the deserts in just about every case that you possibly can to be able to get some of these bonuses. This food is going to help you to make sure that your your desert-based cities are not starving, you know, obviously because there's not a lot of food in the desert. Although, if you get lucky enough to get some floodplains, that could make a pretty big difference because being able to get those to increase the, the food that you can have, you could probably have these desert-based cities still grow pretty big and, and get a lot of food and growth and things like that. I think it's still a good idea to settle near as much desert as you can, but still kind of maybe keep a few, you know, like grassland tiles and things like that nearby, just, just to have a few extra options. But this civilization, and more so than just about any other civilization, I think is going to enjoy the desert. I mean, places like, uh, uh, civilizations like Nubia do also enjoy the desert, and there's a few others, but I think this civilization is definitely made for it, and they're going to thrive in the desert even more so than any other civilizations that we've seen so far. Just as much as Canada is going to thrive in the tundra, and, and, and the other Arctic, uh, uh, in the snow, as more than just about any other civilization. So it's another kind of unique civilization we see here that's going to really be able to take advantage of a uh, tile set that uh, not a lot of civilizations will actually go for. Mines will provide less production, but a significant gold increase. Mines provide less production, but a significant gold increase. Now, this is your first hint into what this civilization is going to be all about. Uh, if your mines provide less production, then obviously they're not going to be big production type producers. You're not, that's not how they're going to get their, their buildings and, and their units and things like that. Uh, and then obviously getting the more gold. There's your other hint. This is a gold based civilization. Obviously, we see here that they lose um, the two production that you would normally get from a mine, but gain four gold. So that is a net increase of two you know, resources, if you will. Um, the one good thing about this, and we're going to see more about this here as we get further in uh, to into the video about some more of their gold uh, trending, you know, kind of bonuses and things like that, is that Gold, just like faith, is a universal empire-wide production, you know, resource, if you will. Um, whereas production itself, like actual hammers, if you know, are 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 um, specific to the city that you're in. And so, if you have one city that's got a hundred production, another city that's got ten, that city with a hundred production cannot help that city with ten very well. I mean, there's just not much that you can do there. Maybe produce some trade routes or or things like that to send over there. Maybe produce some builders to help them out. But really, there's very limited that hundred production city can do to help that ten production city. However, if you have a city that can produce a hundred gold per turn versus a city that can produce only ten gold per turn, and you're going to get uh, bonuses to to all of your gold stuff like that, and and we're about to find out here in a minute. Spoiler alert: We're going to get some discounts to uh, gold purchases. Well, then that 100 uh, gold city can help that 10 gold city grow and prosper. And also that 10 gold city is not worthless to that 100 gold city. If you think about it, that 10 gold city is not much, but it's still a 10% increase for that 100 gold city to be able to produce more things there as well. So what this comes down to is you're not going to get a lot of actual hammer production in all of your cities, but the gold that you're going to get is going to allow you to have basically empire wide production that can help all of your cities equally. You know what I mean? So I think this is it's an interesting way of doing it. Uh, and again, it's not going to be to everybody's liking, but if you do like gold, if you do like that play style, this is very likely the civilization for you. And commercial hub buildings can be purchased with faith. 
Commercial hub abilities can be purchased with faith. That's a pretty big deal because um, you are going to want to get some faith with the civilization. I'm sure. I'm sure you're already getting six faith, you know, with max desert yield uh, for your cities. I mean, up to six faith, I should say. Uh, so you're going to be getting a decent amount of faith for your city from your cities, uh, and being able to not spend gold on those gold producing buildings and instead spend the faith to then make gold to buy other things. It's it's actually going to be a good domino effect there to really kind of help you continue to grow. And, and, and prosper and make sure that your cities are as profitable as they can be because you should be able to have enough faith to buy just about any of the buildings uh, that you want as soon as they become available. Mali's unique district is the Suguba, which replaces the standard commercial district. This district grants a discount to every faith and gold purchase in the city in which it's placed and receives a major adjacency bonus for rivers and holy sites. A major adjacency bonus, it, do not underestimate how powerful this can be. Uh, plus two gold from the adjacent river and plus two gold from the uh, adjacent holy site. If you do like a, 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 if you can get a certain situation where you can get like a diamond formation where you have two commercial hubs and then two holy sites in between them, you can get a very significant amount of gold adjacency, plus take the civic that gives you increased uh, gold adjacency there, you're going to be able to add up to a, a large amount of gold just from this adjacency alone. So that's a really cool deal. The discount that you get to both gold and faith, if it was just gold, you know, it's still good, but the fact that it also gives you a discount to faith, again, that goes back to that whole mentality of, you are a empire producer, not a city producer. And so both gold and faith are going to help you produce the things that you need. Um, you're probably even going to want to go all the way up to get the uh, the government building that allows you to buy units with faith so that you can either buy them with gold or buy them with faith based on the need and based on what you have the most of. And really just building up your gold and faith engines, you're going to be able to build just about anything with one exception. And that's the districts. The districts you're not going to be able to get with you know either gold or faith. There is... I forget the, what is it? That, there, there is something that gives you a, a ability to get districts with gold. I can't remember if it's a golden age thing or something like that. I honestly don't remember. I don't get it very often, but uh, there is a way to get uh, districts to buy them with gold, um, but it's not a very common thing to have. So most of the time, that is going to be the one thing that you will have to hard pre pre uh, produce yourself with your hammers is those initial districts. But once you get the districts down, you're going to be able to buy all the buildings and all the units and everything else to support it with either gold or faith within that. So it's a pretty cool deal. The Monde Kalu Cavalry is Mali's unique unit. This medieval unit receives gold from kills and provides protection to nearby trader units. Gold from kills, I mean, can't go wrong there, getting more and more and more gold. Um, obviously, you may not be necessarily super focused on combat a lot of the time, but, you know, in the middle of the game, when you get these units out, being able to uh, declare a few wars, not necessarily to, to take cities, but to just farm their units to get some extra gold. Why not? I mean, I think that's a good idea. Plus the protection that you get for your traders. I think we're going to see here in a second what that actually ends up being. Uh, if I remember, I think it's four tiles with, within four tiles of your your cavalry units, you get uh, your traders can't be uh, plundered, which is obviously really good because trade routes are going to be very key to the civilization to keep that gold coming in high and, and to really keep you know whatever uh, strategy you're going for uh, running smoothly. Mansa Musa's unique ability is Sahel Merchants. <laughs> All right, so Sahel Merchants is the unique ability that he has. He's going to have international trade routes gain plus one gold for every flat desert tile in the origin city. Not just the one surrounding your city, like the that first bonus that you got. Every flat desert tile. Now, that doesn't include hills, uh, obviously, but there's still, there's not really a whole lot of hills most often in the desert. There's a few here and there. We just don't make good Petra sites, but more often than not, it's going to be flat a lot of the times. And so being able to get, you know, six, seven, eight, ten, twelve, I mean, it is not impossible to get a large number of desert tiles within your cities to be able to make the most of this bonus. So you're going to be settling, like I said, a lot either on or near the desert with this uh, civilization. And the trade routes here are going to take even more advantage of that and continue to grow that that universal uh, empire wide production engine even higher. Uh, you can also receive plus one trade route capacity every time you enter a golden age. I assume that's a permanent trade route capacity and it doesn't go away because it would be really annoying if you went to a golden age, got the plus one, and then you uh, got out of a golden age and it went away. I, I, that doesn't make sense to me. I think it, it, to me it makes sense that it would just be plus one every time you enter a golden age. And so for that reason, it's a lot more likely that you're going to want to go through, you're going to chain golden ages together more likely with this guy than maybe do the the dark age, uh, heroic age um, kind of counter. Um, I think chaining golden ages, so just to continue to get one trade route capacity uh, every single time you get a golden age, 
would be the most optimal strategy here because that's going to be, you know, several trade routes by the end of the game that you're going to get for free. Um, the other things we got here are the Songs of the Jelly. Jelly? Jelly? Um, City Centers, we already talked about that one. City Centers gain plus one faith and plus one food for every adjacent desert and desert hills tile. Plus the mines receiving minus one prediction. Okay, I thought it was minus two. It's only minus one still, um, but plus four gold. Pretty big swing in the gold side of things. And then you make purchase commercial hub district buildings with faith. Now, here's one she did not mention. Minus 30% production when constructing buildings or training units. This civilization does not want to produce anything but the districts themselves. Um, and so it's really going to be all about buying everything that you need. Again, except for those districts, unless you get, again, I can't remember what it is that gives you, oh, please let me know in the comments below if you remember off the top of your head, or I'll probably go look it up as soon as I'm done with the video. But the thing that allows you to, uh, to purchase uh, districts as well. Um, and then we got the uh, Mandakalu, is that how they said it? Uh, cavalry here uh, that replaces the knight. So, you know, it's going to come around that time period that we get a lot of other cavalry units in the medieval ages. Uh, trader units are immune to being plundered if they're within four tiles of the cavalry unit and on land tile. That's pretty good. Um, uh, that's pretty good radius. You're going to be able to keep them pretty close. You're going to actually be able to get right up against your borders. And if you can't get into somebody else's borders, still protect your, 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 uh, your units well into that other person's borders, which is pretty cool. Uh, combat victories provide gold equal to 100% of the unit's base combat strength. That is going to add up to a pretty decent amount of gold over time. And we got the Saguba, I guess that's what it says. I thought it says an R, but it's actually a B, Saguba. Uh, the district unique to Mali that um, districts are 20% districts are twenty percent cheaper to purchase with gold and faith in this city. Okay, well, that's good. So then you can buy... I mean, I mean, this isn't saying that you can buy the districts, but if you do get to the point where you can buy the districts, they will be 20% cheaper. That's good. And obviously the uh, the uh, units and buildings, things like that are also 20% cheaper. 20% is a pretty big deal. Plus, I'm assuming you can add that in with uh, some of the other bonuses that you can get for um, pr uh, purchasing, such as the um, the uh, the government that allows you to get a 50% discount on faith purchases. Um, and theocracy. Sorry. There we go. And uh, some of the other bonuses that you can get to reduce that even cheaper. So you're going to be able to get a lot of stuff very, very cheap with this civilization. And then let's see, plus two gold. We already talked about the adjacency. It's a really good adjacency. So yeah, gold is where it's at, plus with supplemented by a, a decent amount of faith as well. Golden Ages increase trader capacity and trade routes receive extra gold for each desert tile in the origin city. Though desert empires typically struggle to grow, Molly's focus on gold and purchase power will give you what you need to keep up with or surpass civs settled elsewhere on the map. Money may not buy happiness, but you may be able to buy victory as Molly. With this much gold and faith in his pocket, Mansa Musa can go for any type of victory. Will you store up the treasures of this world and the next? How will you lead Molly in Sid Meier's Civilization VI Gathering Storm? So like I said, a very, very interesting civilization to play as, I think. Um, you're not going to be focusing as much on production type things. Does that mean you're not going to have industrial zones at all? No, sure. Have a few because there may be a few things that you might still want to produce, um, but you're really are going to be focusing in mostly on your trade routes and your faith production and things like that to really keep the gold and faith engine that's really going to be, again, buy anything in your empire, no matter where it's at. You know, you build a brand new city and then you're going to instantly buy all the you know internal buildings, the granary, the the uh, monuments, and all the other stuff right away. Get a new district. You're going to be able to buy all the, the buildings that you need for that, that district right away. So you're going to be able to get your cities, your brand new cities, no matter where they're at on the map, up and running and, and at max you know efficiency as quickly as possible. And I think that's a really, really awesome deal. Um, being able to get uh, the uh, Golden Age belief that allows you to purchase settlers and builders with uh, faith or gold and make it even cheaper compounds with what he's got already, you're gonna be able to pump out a whole bunch of cities for you to pick that one up. So I think this is going to be a very interesting civilization to play as, and that's not to everybody's taste, I'm sure, um, but definitely a different play style and a different, different take on things. As far as what she said about being able to go after any victory type, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess you're going to get enough faith to be able to go for religion. You're going to be able to get enough gold to support and buy uh, a military if you want to go for conquest. Culture... I guess. I mean, I don't know if I see the culture, I'll be honest, um, as much because sure, you're going to be able to get the buildings and things for your theater districts if you need them. But 
you're not going to be able to just buy your way to some uh, wonders necessarily. And you're not going to be able to buy. Well, I guess you'll have the money to buy the great people and the faith to buy the great people. So I guess there's that. So I guess I, guess I could see a, a cultural victory, um, especially since they're going to be adding in the new uh, the new unit, which is the, the, the rock band. And to see how that gets, I think it gets bought with faith as well. So I guess maybe, maybe with some of the new mechanics coming in, maybe theater uh, uh, or sorry, uh, cultural victory is still very much in the cards for this guy. And then the last one would be science victory. We don't know what the new mechanics for the science victory are going to be. They're going to add a few changes to science victories. Uh, but I guess, I mean, you're not going to be able to buy, unless you get, again, that thing that allows you to buy districts, you're not going to be able to buy the spaceport itself. Um, and the production's not going to be super high, but I guess it's plausible that you're going to be able to get you're going to be able to get all the science buildings that you need to be able to keep your 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 science rate up really really high and be able to advance into those things very quickly. So again, I guess it's plausible. I do think it's going to be more likely. Oh, there's also a diplomatic victory. Completely forgot about that new victory that you're going to add in as well. But I think it's going to be more likely a conquest victory it definitely plays into what he wants to do, obviously a religion victory. And I think the other ones again, provided depending on how they change some things around you might be able to buy your way to one of those other victories as well. So again, a very interesting civilization. I think it's going to be, again, a lot of fun compared to some of these other civilizations. It's definitely very, very different. This seems to be the theme with Gathering Storm civilization so far. The all One theme that they've seemed to have carried with a lot of these is a really, really crazy bonus and a really, really unusual negative. And in this case, the negative being can't really produce very well uh, with, with, with you know, I'm going to call them hammers. I think they're little gears now, but they used to be hammers. But you know what I mean? The, you're not going to be able to actually produce the normal way very well. So it's a very, very, you know, like I said, interesting take on things. And I think I like this, this uh, new style of civilization that they come out with. Give us a crazy positive, but counteract that with a kind of interesting negative that you have to overcome. So I'm enjoying a lot of these civilizations. I hope you're enjoying these videos. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you think about the Mali civilization? And are you going to play it? Do you like it? Uh, and I do appreciate you watching. Please uh, join me again next week for yet another Civilization 6 Gathering Storm Civilization. Thank you and goodbye.